Attention, everybody. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Lowe, and I gave myself the title of Lieutenant Colonel because I can. This is the art and science of play. I expect you to take notes. I expect you to learn a lot. And most importantly, I expect you to have fun. At ease, everybody. Good morning, everybody. My name is Christine Lowe, and I am so proud to serve as your Alumni Association President for the Nevada, California region. And thank you so much for being a part of a very special event that our Alumni Association is hosting, and that is Honors in Action Boot Camp. Normally, I would play a video before the event so everybody gets settled and gets their papers and pens and coffees and whatever they need to uh, enjoy this event over the course of the next four hours. But I wanted to share a little bit of what has transpired since our last boot camp. Our Nevada, California Regional Alumni Association has always, has always had exceptional members, uh, officers, and projects. But in this last year in 2021, the extraordinary happened. We had three incredible projects to write about and we had an, and still have an extraordinary team of alumni members and alumni, alumni board members. For the first time in our alumni association's 30 plus year history, we have received recognition at our international level. For the very first time in the history of our alumni association, we made the top five alumni associations. And it gets better. Not only did we place in the top five, we won first place. So we are the 2022 most distinguished regional alumni association. So somebody had asked me, it's like, are we gonna be showing our trophy? Because we do receive a trophy. I've got you covered. So I'm gonna go ahead and start our introductory video. I hope you enjoy. And the one thing I wanna point out is that even though we are ready for boot camp and military garb, and I've got my title of Lieutenant Colonel, get to know us by our first names. That's what matters the most. So I hope you enjoy the video and I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen and play the video now. Hang on a moment, let's put this at the right volume. Okay, here we go. There's no sound. Christine, there's no sound. Okay. Let me go ahead and stop sharing. I think I know this trick. Patty taught me this last year. Christine, share your screen again, please. Yes, I got it. Okay. Go to view options, please. Oh, hang on. Can you hear this now? Yes. Okay. All right. Even alumni officers learn a little bit. <laughs> Here we go. Enjoy.
So the QR code is to uh, shows you the link to joining us in the Alumni Association. We have a lot of great events uh, ahead for this year and next year. And we hope that after you graduate or transfer or enter the workforce, uh, we hope that you'll be able to join us. Yeah, see, it takes you right there. Okay, I'll go ahead and uh, stop sharing. And if everyone could put your microphone on mute, I'm gonna go ahead and begin our presentation. Okay, hopefully you could, can you see that? All right. Okay, so once again, welcome to Honors in Action Bootcamp. Uh, this is an event that is hosted by our Alumni Association. And uh, because this is a regional event, this will count towards your third star level. So uh, thank you for joining us and taking time from your Saturday to be here with us. All right, I'm going to, this is our Honors in Action Bootcamp cadence. And you'd, you could keep your mic on mute, <laughs> but I will go ahead and sing this to you. <clears throat> uh, before I do that, I just wanna share the photograph on the left is of my late grandfather, uh, Vicente Gomez, or better known as Chente. Uh, what I admired about my grandfather was that he was a, a man of short stature. He was only about 5'6", five, 5'7", five, but he had this booming voice, which is something that I did not inherit. <laughs> For most people, uh, when I speak, everyone has to crank up their volume, so I'll do my best to channel my grandfather with this boot camp cadence. <clears throat> So you can repeat after me and you can keep your microphones muted if you want. I belong to PTK. I belong to PTK. <laughs> I will conquer HIA. I will I conquer, conquer HIA. HIA. I don't know what you've been told. I, I don't know, know what you've been, you've been, been told. PTK wears blue and gold. PTK wears blue and gold. And gold. HIA won't make you small. HIA won't make you small. Because I stand here brave and tall. Because I, I stand here brave, brave and, and tall. tall. Win awards is what I do. Win awards is what I do. With my team new and true. With my team new and true. Never doubt a word I say. Never, Never doubt a word I say. say. PTK rules the day. PTK rules the day. And the A B B A C A. I am PTK. Huh. I am PTK. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for indulging me on this. This is uh, this is a cadence that thank you so much for the alumni, particularly our alumni officers, Barbara Demopoulos, Faustina Washburn, and um, Stephanie Mutialu uh, for helping develop this cadence. So thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and, oops, oops, all right, the mouse is working. <laughs> all right. I would like to welcome some very special guests. Uh, first of all, I wanna uh, welcome once again, uh, Susan Edwards. She is the Associate Vice President of Honors Programming and Undergraduate Research. She is uh, best known as our Honors in Action Guru from the headquarters. And uh, even though I really geeked out last year, I'm still geeking out because it is such an honor to have Susan with us today. So thank you once again, Susan, for joining us. And uh, yes, it seems a little self-serving to uh, welcome myself, but this is um, a guest presentation and I am so proud to give a presentation uh, regarding the hurdles that 
uh, a student has to go through, and this is based on an alumni's perspective. And so I'm gonna share with you uh, my experience working on Honors in Action Project as a former student, and also give you a perspective on how the Alumni Association uh, plays a role in not only helping you um, in your Phi Theta Kappa journeys as a working on your Honors in Action Project, but also after your, um, your time at a community college or two-year college level. So um, I'm happy to, to share my experiences with you in, in my presentation later this morning. <clears throat> and I also want to welcome the Beta Zeta New Chapter from Kenyatta College. They are the uh, top scoring chapter or top, our top regional chapter uh, with the Honors in Action Project. And um, it is a, a very exciting project, a very timely project and immensely serious uh, endeavor that they pursued uh, in their project. So I cannot wait to hear about their Honors in Action Project. There we go. <clears throat> and the exciting thing about this year's Honors in Action Bootcamp is that our goal is to make it a coast to coast event throughout the course of the year. And we are so excited to have the Pacific region join us today. So we can give a big applause or a big hand wave to the Pacific region. Good morning. <laughs> I know it's a, a little after seven in the morning, but we are so happy that you are here today. So welcome. So I wanna give you a basic overview of what is gonna take place today. So there are three parts in our uh, basic training in our HIA bootcamp. <clears throat> the first part will be uh, the presentations by both Susan Edwards and me. And um, you know, be you know, take a lot of notes. Um, you are welcome to take screenshots, but the good news about you being here today is that we will send you copies of the presentations after uh, the boot camp presentation. So, um, but if it does help to enhance your note taking, by all means, take screenshots of our presentation. But you will get this uh, a few days after our boot camp. After my presentation, I'm also going to introduce you to our Gung Ho HIA workshop. And that's an interactive workshop in which you get to work with either own chapters or for you who are brand new to Phi Theta Kappa and you are the only representative of your chapter, we've got a breakout room for you as well. I know many of you are just beginning to learn what's uh, honors in action or even what's Phi Theta Kappa. Not to worry. This bootcamp will give you a lot of information about Phi Theta Kappa's premier um, scholarly project, which is Honors in Action. But we'll also share with you a little bit of what it takes to have a rewarding Phi Theta Kappa experience. So this Gunho workshop will work for everybody. So as I already mentioned about the Gunho workshop, this will be a, a well, <clears throat> this will be a 60-minute event in which we'll have uh, breakout rooms for either chapters or with individuals in their sole chapter. We're, we're, we're gonna fit you in one way or another. And we will also have a boot camp survival guide. So um, <clears throat> be prepared, but don't worry, you're gonna succeed no matter what, we're not gonna let you fail. You'll also have a little bit of a break uh, to have lunch or a little light snack. And then uh, we will have just a very quick Q&A to see if there's any comments or questions regarding either the presentations or most importantly, the gung -ho workshop that we had. The third part of our presentation will be a presentation by the Zeta Zeta New Chapter at Kenyatta College. And uh, the nice thing about these presentations is that we also get to feature uh, prominent members of our alumni association not only will they introduce the uh, presenters, but also uh, field the questions and answers. So um, this is, these are presentations also have uh, wonderful alumni members who are also taking their time to join us today. We also have uh, some raffles. We also have a raffle and uh, prizes and not just one prize, but lots of prizes. And so we've got some good stuff in store for you. And then finally, we'll get everything wrapped up. Uh, by five minutes or two o'clock. And uh, again, thank you all for being here with us this morning. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead <clears throat> and stop sharing. All right, I will go ahead and pass the virtual microphone to our executive vice president, Faustina Washburn, who is also has been inducted into the Phi Theta Kappa Hall of Honor. So Faustina, take it away. Thank you, Christine. It's my pleasure, and it really is a pleasure to introduce to you an awesome woman, Susan Edwards. She's the Associate Vice President of Honors and Programming and Undergraduate Research at International Headquarters. Her journey began with Phi Theta Kappa in 1991 as an advisor for the Omega Sigma chapter at Houston Community College. She served as the founding advisor in 2002 for the Beta Lambda Mu chapter at Lone Star College, Sci Fair in Texas. Both chapters, she coached and earned the honor of being named the society's most distinguished chapter. That's an achievement, I wanna tell you. She taught history and introduction to the humanities for 30 years. She joined Phi Theta Kappa headquarters staff in 2007 of January. Susan is a former Fulbright Fellow and National Endowment for the Humanities grantee and was named 2005 Texas Professor of the Year by the Carnegie Foundation and 2005 Piper Professor by the Minnie Stevens Piper Foundation. In 2002, she received the Mosul, Mosul Scholar Award to study at the University of Havana. She has served as a member of the ACPA's two-year college commission and the National Collegiate Honors Council, two-year college and honors semester committees. As a board member for the National Council for Student Development and for the American Association of Women in Community Colleges. She's a busy lady, I wanna tell you. Susan is a graduate of the Le of Leadership Houston Tech, Leadership Texas and Leadership America. She served as chair of Phi Theta Kappa's Association of Chapter Advisors, as humanities representative to the Honors Program Council, and was elected advisor representative to the Phi Theta Kappa Board of Directors. She co-edited, is she was a co-editor of the fifth edition of Phi Theta Kappa Leadership Development, a, a Humanities Approach and Development, the sixth edition of the curriculum that is available online at the leadershipstudies.ptk.org. She serves as a, nas a national facilitator for Phi Theta Kappa's leadership development program, certification seminars, and edits the honors program guide and the civic scholar. Phi Theta Kappa Journal of Undergraduate Research. She loves to travel and has visited 75 nations on six continents. And she's off to the Antarctica in 2022. I hope she has a jacket packed. She and her husband, Jeff, live in Houston, Texas with two cats, Izzy and Tabitha, and two dogs, Hillary and Lily, who are quite happy that COVID-19 has kept them at home for a while. We are so honored to have Susan with us today and for her to share her experience with us. Thank you, Susan, you're on. <laughs> Thank you, Faustina. And um, I know um, Jeff and I are really excited about Antarctica. We leave November 19th. The cats and dogs, not so much to the extent that they know. And since I live in Houston, um, I didn't own a coat, but I have purchased one in anticipation of nice cold weather. So I can't wait. Um, I'm really happy to be here with you, um, you know, Faustina and Christine and everyone on the um, Nevada California Regional Alumni Association team has done a superior job and congratulations again for being named the most distinguished alumni association. Well deserved. Um, the work you've been doing is incredible. And I, I hope everybody in the Nevada California um, region knows how what they're doing has an impact. And I guess our last honor study topic will leave a legacy for you um, that will allow you to leave a legacy. So um, congratulations again. Um, it was really exciting to hear that announcement at PTK Catalyst uh, 2022. So let me share my screen because um, I wanna talk to you about honors in action. And to be, let's see. 
Here we go. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to turn on anything. I don't want to turn on subtitles. Um, thank you. I got a little message on my screen. Don't you want to make it more exciting? Turn on subtitles. No, I don't, uh, especially not right now. So Honors in Action um, is one of two projects that Phi Theta Kappa really asks chapters to work on in the course of a year. And Honors in Action, you may have thought about, well, why? You know, if you've heard about Honors in Action or you've worked on it, you may not um, have really thought about well, why honors in action. And, and the reason is that it addresses the second part of Phi Theta Kappa's mission to provide under, uh, or college students with opportunities to grow as scholars and leaders. And that's important because one of the things you're gonna do with honors in action is really consider the impact of your project. And it's not just on the people you work with, but it's also on you as individuals and as a team. So you wanna be thinking about how you grow as scholars and leaders. We know you're already scholars. You're members of Phi Theta Kappa. You're here on, for you, a Saturday morning um, and for the Pacific region, really early Saturday morning. So you are dedicated to that. Um, so we know you're there, you're scholars, but we hope through this process that you, you grow. And we know you're leaders because again, you wouldn't be here on a Saturday if you weren't leaders in your chapter. So thank you for, for being leaders, congratulations on your academic accomplishments and for your interest in honors in action because it's very near and dear to our hearts. Um, so let me start um, by saying that there's some basics about honors in action that sometimes people don't realize. And I, so I wanted to talk about those. You know, one or two members is all it takes. And I'll give you an example. Um, Alicia Vallette, some of you, you know her, she is the New England Regional President and she comes from the Community College of Rhode Island and their, their chapter had done honors in action before, but they never had really maybe embraced it with the passion Alicia embraced it with and she got first one other person to work with her and then a couple of other people, she had a very small team and they ended up in the top 10 chapters internationally. One person with passion for this Two people makes a team. So don't, if you don't have a big team, don't let that stop you. you know, that, that doesn't mean you can't do great work. And so we want you to know that um, because we hear often, well, we don't have a big team, so we can't do this. You can, um, you absolutely can with one or two people. We have seen it done over and over again. Honors in Action has been a great equalizer for chapters. Um, it doesn't mean, I mean Large chapters still you know, do really well with honors in action and win awards, but very small chapters or very small teams do as well. So also take it one step at a time. You know, my next slide, I'm gonna start with just looking at the, the process, the overview of the process, and then we're gonna break it down. But the way to success with honors in action is to go one step at a time and know that it's not always linear, that you may, start with the step and, and, and think you're ready to move on and then find out, well, maybe we need to go back and then look at this and go on again. Don't let that stop you. No, be resilient, um, persevere because you, you'll move forward, it'll happen. And so just take it one step at a time, you know, lay a foundation to build on. I, I understand that a number of people here today are maybe here um, as the, the sole person for your chapter, or maybe your chapter hasn't worked on an honors and action project before, or maybe you as a team haven't worked on an honors and action project before. But one of the things that you can do with working on one is that the people who come after you won't see it as so scary anymore because you did it. And so laying that foundation can be really important. You're gonna hear from Kenyatta College. Um, they have a long history of doing really wonderful honors in action projects. And so the teams that come up at Kenyatta, Kenyatta College know, you know that there's, there's a base there. So even if they don't know honors in action, they know this can be done. You can do that for your chapter as well. The, um, you earn five-star status. And so the fact that you're here today, I think it was Christine who mentioned that you are um, working on your three-star status just by being here. Honors in action gets you to the five-star status, which is really exciting. Um, it's nice to be a five-star chapter. It's nice to be an any star chapter. We appreciate your work, but it's really nice to make it there um, and lay that foundation. Your project 
should be completed between January 1st and December 31st, 2022. Obviously, it is what, May 14th today. Um, so we're, we're a little bit into the, the calendar year. Don't let that stop you. We have a lot of chapters that start in the summer. We have chapters who start in the fall. And we have chapters who have been successful doing both of those things. So it's okay to be learning about honors in action, to be getting ready and to start your, your work. If you haven't already done that, don't let it stop you. Hallmark Award entries. One of the things that, about honors in action is that we see the project holistically, that it starts with the academic investigation, which I'm gonna talk about, um, quite a bit, and then goes through submission of the Honors in Action Hallmark Award. So I wanted to share with you that the deadline um, for this year's Honors in Action Hallmark Award work is January 18th, 2023. So you can kind of, as you're, you're working on your timeline, you know, look at that, start with the end in mind that you want to click submit on or before January 18th at five o'clock central time. And, and then work backward from there. But we wanna hear from you. And for the first time ever in the past year, I had somebody ask me the question, um, do home, the honors in action uh, projects or homework awards have to be good? No one had ever asked before, but the answer is no, they don't, right? Because the whole idea is to address that second part of Phi Theta Kappa's mission to provide opportunities to grow as scholars and leaders. So by following the process, if you're working on um, growing as scholars and leaders, you've been successful. We honor that and we wanna hear what you've been doing. So think of this holistically, think of it um, with the end in mind that you are going to submit an honors in action um, Hallmark Award entry. We hope it's great, but we just hope to read what you're saying because we, we just sincerely, want to know how we are doing in terms of reaching um, our mission and, and helping you grow as scholars and leaders. So those are the basics. Here's the process. And I am gonna break this down for you, but I wanted you to see it holistically so you know that it's, it's not daunting. Sometimes it can feel that way, but it's, it's just not. Um, and I, I like to use a, a quote by Nelson Mandela who said that it's always impossible. It always feels impossible until it's done. He wasn't talking about honors in action, of course, he was doing some pretty big picture leadership, but it's true of honors in action. We hear it all the time that it can seem daunting until it's finished. And then people say, ah, oh, we're glad we did that. You know, here's why it made a difference. So you start with academic investigation. From your academic investigation, you design an action piece of the project. You're gonna gauge your impact and throughout the process, you're going to reflect on the project. So you really need three tools. Um, one is you want to have a copy of, uh, for each person preferably, but a copy of the 2022-2023 Honors Program Guide. It's um, available online at ptk.org backslash honors. And it will give you everything you need to know about the honor study topic, which is the art and science of play um, for this year and next year. We're really excited about that topic and we've heard lots of really positive feedback about it. So you want a copy of that guide. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we talk about academic investigation. Then you also um, take a look at the Honors in Action planning and judging rubric. It's in the guide, but you can also get the full view. The, the part that's in the guide is all of the the top points you can earn, because that's what we hope you strive to do. But you can see the whole um, project. If you go into uh, ptk.org and you look at Hallmark Awards, the rubrics um, are there. And, and you might wanna also take a look at the, the questions that are asked for Honors in Action Hallmark Awards. Those likely won't be up again until um, August or early September. But if you take a look at them, you can see what you're going to have to write um, as you, you finish your project or as you go along. So you take a look at the rubric, take a look at the guide, um, keep a journal, whether you do that electronically or whether you're old school and you like pen and paper or pencil and paper or crayon and paper, I guess that's really, really old school. Um, make sure more than one person has access to it. So you 
as you're going along, you want to make sure you're taking notes, that you're thinking about you know, why you're making choices and how you're making them and what you're doing. That's going to make your job at the end, as you're reflecting, engaging impact, so much easier uh, because you're going to have that information right there. In the honors program guide, there is a section on um, journaling and keeping a journal. It was written by Dr. Terry Ruckel of Pearl River Community College, who serves on the Honors Program Council. And she has a lot of expertise in journaling and writing. And so it's a series of questions you can ask the team and, and have someone keep that, that information. So there's the process. So let's talk um, about the individual pieces of the project. So hopefully I can shed some more light and, and know that as you've got questions, um, you know, add them to the chat. I'm happy to answer those. I want to make sure that you get what you came for um, in terms of understanding honors in action today. So I mentioned the holistic approach, following the process, keeping a journal. Here's the thing that's really important and, and can separate chapters that, that are working on honors in an action project and doing a good job. And those that really um, may excel at the, the process as you're, you're thinking. All of the academic investigation is going to be done into Phi Theta Kappa's biennial honor study topic. I mentioned the art and science of play this year. Always keep in mind that what you're studying, what you're investigating is the art and science of play. You're going to break that down and you're going to look at one of the seven themes and work in one of the seven themes. But the theme is a lens through which you are looking at the overall honor study topic. I think the Honors Program Council made it a little bit easier this year because the word play is in every single one of the theme titles. So hopefully that's a little bit of a reminder that, that you're looking at the art and science of play, but make sure that you're always going back to the art and science of play. Um, it's easy to get lost in a theme. So that's uh, maybe tip number one. So let's look at the um, honor study topic and the honors program guide. This is the foundation of honors in action. You wanna base your academic investigation on the art and sides of play, some aspect of it. And you're gonna pick as a team, you're gonna pick one of the seven themes, the essence of play, economics of play, the systems of play, the architecture and design of play, the soul of play, nostalgia as play, or play it forward. If you go to ptk.org, backslash honors. Again, you're going to see the honors program guide. Every chapter is going to receive five hard copies of the guide as well. Those will go to your contact advisor. So um, you, you have hard copies, but you also can download the PDF. You can print it. You can share it. Um, we want you to do that so that you're using the guide. But again, these are the seven themes. And I want to take a look at one theme so you have a sense of what's there. The Honors Program Council has written introductions to each of the themes. I recommend reading those. You don't have to use the, what the Honors Program Council members who wrote the introduction were interested in. You can use it, but hopefully it gets you thinking about the types of things that fit in that theme. Um, each theme also has an overarching question. And I wanted to use this example, theme three is systems of play. And the overarching question is, in what way do one's role, identity, and access influence the experience of play? What the overarching question does is it lets you know whether you're in the right place in terms of a theme, that, that what you end up investigating answers that question in some way. So if, for example, um, if you look at uh, one's role, identity, access, and, uh, you know, influence the experience of play, you know, one of the things that's been in the news a lot over the past few months is the, the swimmer, Leah Thomas, from the University of Pennsylvania. Um, he, he began life at least identified as a male by society. Um, he has transitioned to being female, so it's she's she, and she's been a swimmer the whole time, and has been a swimmer for the University of Pennsylvania the whole time first as, as a male swimmer, or at least uh, was put into that category and, and she's transitioned. And she, she met, met the NCAA's definition of how much, uh, how many hormones, the level of hormones you have to have to be female and to be able to swim. And, and so she's swimming as a female now for the University of Pennsylvania. Well, 
the reason it's come up so much is that she was a good swimmer as a male. As a female, she's, I guess, uh, for a weird metaphor, she's blowing everyone out of the water. Um, her times are slower as a female than they were when she was a male, but she's changing the face of, of collegiate swimming. And so there are lots of, of people and organizations looking at this. And of course, people with all sorts of opinions about it. If you were looking at Leah Thomas, or you're looking at the question of what happens, you know, if, if you're we're only defining uh, people as, as male and female, and that's how people determine where they play in terms of sports, what does that, what does that say about you know, influence and access to play and the experience of play? Lots of other uh, um, examples, um, but this one I, I like to use just because one of the things you're gonna be asked to do is look at varied viewpoints. And of course, you can imagine how many viewpoints there are about Leah Thomas and her swimming at the University of Pennsylvania and the bigger question about gender and um, the experience of play. So you, you wanna be looking at that um, and thinking about what all types of people are thinking when they look at these issues. I mentioned um, introduction, there are also resources in, for each theme. Again, you may use those, you may not. Um, there are loads of resources that you can use um, to, to do your academic investigation of a theme. Uh, but the Honors Program Council has given you some um, suggestions of things you might take a look at um, as you're looking at the theme. So let's look at academic investigation because this, you know, among the daunting things potentially about honors in action or the way people feel about it is the academic investigation. It ranks number one, but you do this all the time. You do it in class, you do it outside of class. Um, I know that when uh, Jeff and I, my husband and I are, are watching something and you know we are watching a show on TV or we're reading and we come across something we're not familiar with, well, what do we do? Well, we get on our phones and we start investigating. It's a natural thing to do and to try to find answers like, well, who is that? Or you know, what does this word mean? So think about that in terms of, of you do this all the time. This is not something that you don't. Um, and so you want to start your academic investigation with research objectives. This is one of the things that chapters um, sometimes forget to do. And so you want to do them before you begin your research. And the thing is, they're, they're, not, um, they're not mysterious things. It might be something like, we, um, we know we need eight academic sources to write our Honors in Action Hallmark Awards. So we're going to look at 16 at least 16 sources, so we have some variety um, and we are going to look those and winnow them down to eight sources. We're gonna invite our campus's research librarian to work with us and help us identify academic sources that fit with our theme and with the art and science of play. Um, it might be that we are starting out with two members of our Honors in Action team we hope to build to four members. So you're just setting the stage for how you're going to approach Honors in Action. We are going to keep a research journal. Those are the kinds of things you want with your research objectives. You know, you want to go through the whole smart or smarter um, process. They want to, you want them to be measurable and all those things that, that make really effective goals. Um, you might, if you're not sure how to do objectives, invite one of your chapter advisors or invite um, with their help, maybe someone on campus who really has expertise in setting goals and ask them to help you set goals. One of the things about Honors in Action is that we know you're smart. We know you have uh, had ac academic success, so you know what you're doing. But if you haven't done Honors in Action before, you may not know this process. And so it's, it's very helpful to get coaches and have people help you learn through this process um, I, I like to use, and I guess it's an art and science of play example, but um, I, I am not a University of Alabama graduate, so let me mention that. But their football coach, um, Nick Saban, is, is perhaps the most famous college football coach in this country, and, and he's considered by many people the greatest of all time. Well, you know, those football players who come on, on campus who are recruited and they decided to go to the University of Alabama, 
you know, they all know how to play football, right? And they're good if they're going to the University of Alabama, like you. Um, so they, they get to the University of Alabama and Nick Saban and all of his assistant coaches, because he has a lot of those, don't say, hey, we know you, had to, you know how to do this. Um, we'll see you on Saturday. You know, they, they, don't, they don't just assume that everyone's gonna be able to buy into the system and know the process and know how to do their jobs and, and there's no room for improvement. So think of honors in action that way. It isn't that you don't have these skills. It's just the fight that a capital wants to help give you opportunities to grow your skills, which in turn hopefully helps you in the classroom, in the workplace, on scholarship applications, on all the things you're going to do beyond uh, Phi Theta Kappa. So set those objectives. You need a research question. So the overarching question for the theme tells you which theme you should be in, you know, where you're really working. But a research question is going to be more narrow than that. You know, you're going to think about, well, what interests you about this theme? And, and what are you really interested in learning? You know, some of this may change over time, but you want that question to guide what you're doing. Um, the, when you're picking a theme and when you're, you're working on the research question or anything else with honors in action, we recommend that you don't vote on it because when you take a vote, um, the people who lose that vote sometimes just go away. And, and you don't want to do that. Go, co reach consensus. You know, keep talking until everybody can live with the decision. And then be honest. If you can't live with the decision, you have to say that. That's the way the Honors Program Council works. You know, we don't always agree on things, but we talk about them and we keep talking until we all can agree. Oh, yeah, the art and science of play is the topic. That's what you want to do. Um, and so Come up with that research question. Again, if you don't know how to do a research question, invite a coach in to help you fashion your research question. It could be an alum. It could be that your chapter advisor. It could be um, a, a member of the college. He's not part of Phi Theta Kappa. It can be a community member, whoever it is. Get some, someone to help you with the, the um, development of that research question. Um, and that's how you're going to learn to do them. We also have a guide on page 27 in the honors program guide. We have a guide to developing a research question. So you can take a look at that as well. And then you're going to work with academic sources. And I'm going to talk more about those. But we have in the guide, pages 29 through 33, we have got um, a lot of information about what an academic source is and, and how you can look at them and the questions you might ask as you're looking at them. So take a look at that. Um, again, go talk to the research librarians on campus. Go, go talk to researchers who can also help guide you through this process. Then you do want collaborators for honors in action. You want collaborators on campus who are not part of Phi Theta Kappa. So beyond your team, beyond your advisors or advisor team, um, you want to to engage some people on campus at any stage of the honors and action process. And then you want to engage some people in the community as well, however you define your community. And they could end up being participants at some stage in the process. They could end up being coaches. They could end up being people who just help you with the project and help you make it better. But think about collaborators and who are the best collaborators to work with. And then develop research conclusions. And it's from the research conclusions that you're going to develop your action. So until you develop research conclusions, go all the way through the academic investigation process, you don't even think about your action. And that's one of the hardest parts about honors and action for people because they like to start with the idea of the action first and then back into the process. Don't do that. Follow the process, trust the process, and then you're going to find an action that, that will address things that interest you by virtue of you setting a research question and doing your research on something that interests the team. So let's look some more at it. Here's what you want to look at the, the rubric. This is from the, the rubric and the questions for honors in action. And I like it because it sets out everything that you want to look for in, in academic sources. You need at least eight. But of course, most, most chapters will look at more than eight um, simply because you, you have some other things you're looking at. Um, but you want to be clearly academic in nature. You know, these are expert sources or academic 
interviews with expert sources that are, if they're in, their interviews conducted in the past year, also if they're interviews, they should be academic interviews um, and there's a protocol for that. So if you want to do an interview, um, make sure that you work with someone who can help you go through the academic protocols. You know, they're an hour long, you, you write questions and you make sure that they're open-ended. There are things you have to do, you record it, um, you transcribe it. There, there's a process for that. So it, it isn't just calling someone up and asking some questions. You wanna make sure it's an academic interview if you're doing that. Then you also want to make sure that your sources are wide ranging. And that means, you know, basically that you're, you're looking at the representation of different points of view. And, and they don't have to be um, diametrically opposed. I mean, I mentioned Leah Thomas, and there are definitely diametrically opposed opinions there. But the example I like to use is from um, a most distinguished chapter is probably about six years ago now, but they were studying the frontiers of cancer research. And in their sources, what they did is they looked at people who thought, you know, chemotherapy was the best way to, to really address cancer and to try to treat it. Some sources that thought radiation was, and then that the, was a new thing at the time, um, immunotherapy. And so it, it wasn't, they are opposing viewpoints, but they're not, you know, it's not like, you know, how dare you think that radiation is the way to go versus immunotherapy. It was just looking at here, well, here's, here are the treatments for cancer that we have right now. Here's the varied, here are the varied viewpoints of them. And they, they looked at those. So, you know, don't worry if you can't find something that says you're absolutely wrong. This is the way you have to go. It's that just, you're looking at what scholars and experts say about the art and science of play. Um, as it relates to your theme and, and, and your research question. So keeping those in mind, at least eight sources, they have to be clearly academic, um, they have to be wide ranging and you want different points of view. You also, uh, in a, another part of the rubric when you're, we're looking at impact, it's a good idea to have something that's global among those sources or considers global ideas and and the rubric does ask for that. It just doesn't ask for it in this particular sentence. So that's why the rubric is so important to take a look at. So for example, maybe you are studying uh, football, soccer, and you're, you're looking at the whole idea of, you know, why is soccer the most um, widely played and widely watched um, and loved sport in the world? But boy, if you, you're in a place like Houston, Texas, you know, it's the other kind of football that's important. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not soccer at all. We have a male and uh, men's and women's soccer team, a professional one. Um, and, and there's still, um, you know, you can still go watch for $20. Um, you can't watch the Houston Texans for $20. You know, it's much, much more popular. That may be very different where you are. In Nevada, California, um, it's very or Hawaii. It's very and um, it's very likely to be different in Guam or Saipan or the the Mariana Islands. So you know, and it's very likely to be different in other parts of the world. So you want to consider that, and then you know, keep that in your journal. And you may not work internationally because most chapters work locally, but consider it because the rubric does ask for that. All right, so here are the qualities of academic sources because people ask about this all the time. They're presented or published by authors with expertise, expertise and credentials in the field of study. So um, they, they may have degrees or graduate degrees in that field of study. They may have really long careers. Um, you know, for example, um, someone like, uh, my mind is going to blank. Um, Carl Bernstein, you know, who worked with Bob Woodward um, on All the President's Men. Um, Bernstein doesn't have a college degree, but he definitely has credentials as a journalist and a long career as a, a, an award-winning journalist. So it could be those kinds of credentials as well. You don't have to limit that to uh, degree credentials, but expert credentials you want to look for. Um, you know, that the, the the source was presented or published in peer reviewed venues. You're gonna find a lot of things in journals, for example, and, and those tend to be peer reviewed. If someone self published, 
um, you don't want to use that as an academic source. I mean, the person may well be expert, but may not. You're really looking for things that have been peer reviewed, that have been edit, uh, edited. You want them to have clear and accurate references uh, and documentation of works by other researchers. Um, for example, you know, look at footnotes. That's a great place to find out, you know, what are other people saying about this? Where did these scholars get their information? Look at the bibliographies in the back. Um, even for popular works um, by journalists, they will let you know where they got their sources. You can read in the back. Um, documentaries, for example, if you're looking at documentaries, I know Christine is a, a documentary uh, writer and producer and director that, you, that she'll put you know, that information at the end of the documentary. You have to watch all the way through, but you can find you know, who are the experts? Where did, the, um, where did Christine go to get this information? You know, who was she looking at? Who, who were the people who were experts who she looked at? So make sure that you're looking for those qualities. Um, examples, you know, published literature reviews. These sometimes you wouldn't be able to use for graduate degrees, but you can use for honors in action. And the beauty of published literature reviews is you get a lot of different sources that are named and then you can go look for those sources. So it's, it's really kind of a, uh, a beautiful field of scholars who have done work and you can go search them out in places like Google Scholar and find the articles that they've published. And so it's nice published research, whether it's quantitative or qualitative, it's archival, you can use those things. Um, you can use dissertations or theses um, as well if they're published or a book published through a university of press. Those are all examples of academic sources. So more about academic sources, so you have this. Here are some questions that you can ask just to see if something's an academic source. You know, what is the purpose of this academic source? You know, is theory or is it history? Is it a response to somebody's perspective or uh, on your research question? So ask yourself, so what's the purpose? Why is this person writing about this? You know, why, uh, how current is this source? You know, or is it a classic in the field? APA um, suggests that sources be five years or less. You don't have to do that. That's, you can break that APA rule. But you know, if you're using something that's, that's 10 or 12 years old, for example, um, you know, is, it, is it really something that's a classic in the field? Is there more current research that maybe uses that, that research? I mean, think about it, um, just where are you gonna find the best sources for this? Um, it's, it's easier to do than you think. So uh, ask your question, how current or is this classic? What makes it classic in the field? Is there a detectable bias? Nobody is unbiased, but academic sources and, and experts take pains to document their research and document why they're coming down. Um, you know, they've decided they've analyzed their research and here's what they believe based on that. So, if the source is very definitely biased, you might want to consider looking at other sources. You know, you can use that information and sort of move on, but, but if you know that, that it's not, they haven't documented everything that the source comes across as commentary, you know, you're, you're not looking at op-ed pieces in the New York Times, for example, um, or um, the, the Washington Post or a local newspaper, those are commentary you're looking at sources who can back up what they say and this, the bias isn't as detectable there. So, and then how sound is the source? You know, how well is it written? How well is it edited? I mean, you can always find mistakes in sources, you know, it just happens. But if they're edited and they're well-written and they're well-argued, that's, those are the sources you want to use. All right, so where to find them? Colleges, your college libraries, databases. Again, get help from the librarians. You don't have to, to do this on your own. Um, and if you aren't on campus, you know, see if you can Zoom with them. See if you can um, work on a, a, a vert, in a virtual way and ask librarians for help. Um, you know, accessible search engines, uh, WorldCat. I mentioned Google Scholar. That's a great one um, to use. You can, um, that, I will make a comment about Google Scholar, you may find some sources that um, ask you to pay for the sources. If you run up against that, go to your college's library database. Your colleges probably pay 
for access to those journals. So you, you don't have to pay for those sources if you can go to your college's librarian or library. The other thing you can do, um, we're gonna have another round of honors and action grants where you can request up to $1,000 to help with your project. Well, if one of the things you really want is to get some, some articles that you found um, in some of the databases that do charge and your library doesn't have free access to them, well, you can write that into a grant. Um, and that's something that a grant can pay for. And then open access journals, the websites, there are lots of open access journals where you can find uh, things. And then Futurity is an interesting one because they're, they're looking at that database is like the most recent research stuff that's kind of cutting edge. Um, and so you can take a look at that, but there, there are loads of places to find sources, um, you know, use what's maybe what's easy for you to use or stretch a little bit. And again, I'm, I'll say this over and over again, use your college research librarians, ask for their help, their collaborators, they can help you. Um, and, and they are experts at finding academic sources and knowing how to do that. All right, so developing research conclusions. I mentioned how important that is because your action is going to stem from this. So here are the things you can ask so that you will help you develop your research conclusions. You know, what did you learn? When you, you did your research, you've taken notes, your team has come together and shared things. What did you learn? You know, how did your investigation answer your research question? Did you set that research question? How did you answer it? What did you find that helped you answer that research question? You know, what did varied sources contribute to that? So if you're looking at varied sources and you want to consider that, what did they say? You know, was there any common ground? Where did they differ? You know, so you want to consider those very um, those varied sources and, and what they contributed to what you learned. And then, you know, what are the main points that you that you learned? Um, you probably have heard that from English professors, right? Um, and so, what are the main points? Write those down so you've got them. Um, and then, what's the significance of of your results of your research? You know, one of the things you're going to do with an honors and action hallmark award entry is that you're going to talk about why the sources were meaningful to you and why uh, the sources helped you develop your, your, um, your action. So, you know, write those things down. And then, you know, what new ideas did you find that, that you could build off a topic that you studied? That's not just for your team, but for people who may come behind you and be interested in your topic. What, you know, what could they do? That information helps as you're developing research conclusions. All right, so these things are part of the rubric, things for you to consider. The rubric's broken into three parts, academic investigation, action, and impact. And there are 34 points for academic investigation. When you look at the rubric though, the whole idea of academic investigation follows throughout the rubric. So there are actually many more points that relate to uh, your academic investigation. So the emphasis is on intentional research, you know, that you, you really went through this process and considered things um, and, and what they meant to you. Heightened awareness of self and community in relation to global issues. I mentioned that, that, you know, you're, you're looking at something particular and you consider, you know, what are global perspectives on that particular topic you're looking at. Um, and that, you know, you want to think about and write about how did you heighten your awareness you know, of yourself, of, of your community in relation to global issues? Again, you're likely working locally and that's, that's what most chapters do, it's all cool, but you wanna consider those things. You know, and um, the, one of my, my favorite books that I've read over the years about uh, soccer, because I like is, is how soccer explains the world or how football explains the world. And it's a really interesting book that explains, you know, not just why people play it or why they, they love it, but, you know, well, what are the politics behind soccer? And all these things that I'd never considered before. I hadn't thought about it um, when I, I used to go to Tampa Bay Rowdies games when I lived in, in Florida. And um, so it's, it's going deeper, you know, how are you more intentional? How are you increasing your appreciation and understanding of things? Um, how did you communicate with collaborators? This is something chapters miss, that it isn't just that you want to invite people to collaborate with you, but you want to communicate with them. You want to select collaborators who are going to en enhance your project 
and who are gonna uh, make a difference, make it stronger in there. So you wanna communicate with them. Um, it's also a really good practice to maybe have a one or two page uh, summary or, or analysis of what you did to hand to them at the end and to thank them for being collaborators, that they've made a difference in your, your project. Then contributions to understanding the honor study topic. Think about, well, how, how did your research make a difference? You know, what, are, what did you learn about the honor study topic? Maybe what did your collaborators learn? How about the people who maybe worked with you on the action piece of the project? What did they learn about the honor study topic as a result of your work? And then um, understanding the importance of lifelong intentional service. An intentional service is that data-based, evidence-based, research-based service to the community. So just, you know, how did it help you understand to go through this process? And then of course you want quantitative and qualitative results as well. And, and you wanna keep those. And those are things like the quantitative are numbers, how many sources, how many people, if you're raising funds, how much money, those kinds of things, how many coaches, you know, how many collaborators did you have? The numbers are different for every chapter. And qualitative results, those are looking at things like, how did you grow as scholars and leaders? You know, how did you grow in your appreciation for lifelong intentional service? You know, look at the rubric that will guide you in the type of things that you want to, to write about in the last part of um, your entry. So um, let me go back one. Action. It's when you finish all of this, that's why this is how you start in, in Honors in Action. When you finish all of your research, that's when you develop your action. And it can be uh, traditional service. It can be an awareness campaign. It can be advocacy. Um, it can be whatever your research conclusions lead you to do. And it can be something that, um, that takes, uh, you know, several hours in terms of just the actual event, um, or you know, it takes something that takes days or weeks. It depends on your project, um, and it depends on where your research conclusions led you. The most important thing to consider is that it stemmed from your academic investigation into the art and science of play. That's what really matters in the end, that you followed that process. And then of course, you, you wanna set um, action and collaboration uh, objectives, just like research objectives. Those are the three types of objections, objectives you want. Can't talk on Saturday morning, but um, you wanna do that. You want to, to really think about how you can make a difference. You may find from your research that there are things that are done really well in your community. Well, that's not the place to go, right? You wanna look at the things that, where you can make a difference because you're looking at how you've had a short-term impact, made a short-term impact on your community and where there's potential for long-term impact. Nobody expects you to change the world from this. I mean, if you do, congratulations, because it could happen. But what we expect that is that you'll, you'll make a start at it, right? You'll make a difference in your community and it's a short-term difference with the potential for long-term impact. So you wanna think about that as well. Um, so let me go, we have a lot of sources um, and I know that Christine is going to talk more um, about this and, and resources, but we have a lot of things online for you to help you uh, work with this. Um, and at ptk.org backslash honors, um, a planning rubric, a workbook, uh, a journaling guide, all of these things that are in the honors program guide, but they also are online, you know, separated out from the guide so that you can use them. We also have film resources that, um, that you can use either as starting points or you know, there are some that very definitely would fit as academic sources. And so um, you, you want to take a look at those. Uh, it could just be a way to have some scholarly fellowship and get everybody excited about the art and science of play that you show one of the films and, and maybe you build uh, some Honors in Action team members from doing that because you're getting them excited. We have Civic Scholar, Phi Theta Kappa's Journal of Undergraduate Research, um, the 2022 uh, guy, our journal uh, edition will come out um, probably in August. We're working on that now, but right now the 2021 and 2020 um, 
examples are on there. It's just That just gives you the sense. It's a different honor study topic, but you can see, well, what did different chapters do? And, and you'll see the chapters pick maybe the same um, theme for the topic, but did very different things because you're in different communities. And that's okay too. You don't have to see what's gonna make us completely original. It's following the process, which I probably have said five or six times, which should be a clue to you um, that you wanna follow the process for you. And then we do have the 2022 honors case study challenge that you can find at ptk.org backslash honors. This is a really cool way to start in honors in action because it's using newspapers, which of course aren't academic sources, but get you thinking about the topic. And you, you look at it five or six articles, you write a summary, you write um, a little bit about where the topic could go in the future, and you, you look at some other sources and you can submit those um, at, in early November. And we pick four winners who get $500 stipends each, and that can be individuals and can be teams. It's, a, it's just a nice way to start the maybe thinking about your topic and um, maybe winning $500. California chapters and individuals have done that in the past. And then um, I know, uh, I think Christine has already mentioned this and will again, but Research Edge at getanedge.ptk.org. Research Edge is, is about academic investigation and you can use that for all sorts of things, but it follows the honors and action process. And so it's also an, a really nice um, short course to take a look at if you have not done honors and action before. So I'm gonna stop there and see if we have some time for questions that I can answer. I know we've got another presentation, but you know, what did I not um, talk about that you were, you were interested in? Uh, what do you still need to know? Um, let me know what questions you have. Hi, my name is Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi, so this is a writing project on the subject of play, right? It's, Plain. You, you are, you will end up writing, it's, you will end up writing um, an Honors and Action Hallmark Award entry, and I'll, I'm going to say something about that in a second. It's actually, it's about academic research, some just very intentional research about the art and science of play through one of the themes. And then it's it's an action project as well, based on that research. The Hallmark Award entry is, it's technical writing. There are 11 questions you answer and it's, it's just writing to answer the question, you know, very specifically what the question asks you. So it's like, it's more like scholarship application writing Oh, than it is creative writing. Okay, and it's an action project. So it's like the, there's a task involved that we would have to carry out. There, there is. I mean, after you've done your, your academic investigation and you get those conclusions, research conclusions, and decide, well, what action could we take that addresses that, then um, you... you will perform an action, you'll, you'll plan it, of course, and you'll, you'll do some sort of action. And then, you know, you're gonna then think about and, and write about the impact of that. So yes, it's, it's do you think of it as intentional evidence-based action with okay. reflection? That's what it is. All right, thank you. Hello, Susan, how are you today? I am well, thanks, how about you? I just want to say thank you so much for, join, for joining us. And um, my question is to you, what do you think is the most crucial thing that students need to remember when they submit, uh, or not necessarily just submit, but when they um, take on the HIA um, project? What is the most crucial thing that you see a lot of students kind of forget in the past that, they, that students need to actually remember um, this time around or if, if they've done it before? Okay, no, that's a, it's a great question too. And, and the most crucial thing is, is really to follow the process, to not put the cart before the horse. Um, give you an example. And then when, because you mentioned submit, you know, and, and I think on the other side, the very end side of it, when you're writing a Hallmark Award entry, the most important thing is to, to leave yourself time as a, as a team um, to write and edit your Hallmark Award entry that Hallmark Award entries um, tend to be heavily edited. They should be, you know, that's, that's what scholars do. And so you, you definitely want to leave time to do that. 
Um, but as an example, we see this every year and, and it, it may just be mistaken writing, but well, you know, the very first thing that you write on a Hallmark Award entry is um, an abstract of 300 or fewer words. And so people will start and they'll say, we did a beach cleanup. Well, of course, immediately what a judge is gonna think, you did the action before you, you did your research. You know, the team didn't go through the process. And so that's why, you know, going through the process and then thinking about that when you're answering questions knowing you know, there, there are people on the other side of this who are reading them and, and you wanna make sure that they know you went through the process, that they know you know what the honor study topic is. And so I, I think those things are connected in the most important thing. And then I, I think you know, having the rubric with you as you plan as a team so that you, can, you know that you're going through the process, but also you're preparing the whole time for the very last piece of writing the answers to the Hallmark Award entry um, and knowing what, what you're gonna be asked to do so that you've, you've planned with the end in mind and you know that you're not missing anything there. Does that help? Yes, it does, thank you. You're welcome. Um, we actually, oh, go ahead, sorry. I have a question in the chat. Um, it says, it's very hard not to think about the action first. What advice do you give to overcome the overwhelming urge to think about what action I can do before research? You know, and that's, that's so true and so great. It is hard uh, to do that. And so one of those things is to make sure as a team, you put that aside. You know, if you start talking about actions, may, maybe have someone, we always call them at headquarters um, and meetings weed whackers who stop you from, from talking about that. Now, maybe someone who's taking notes can, can write something and come back to that. But if you're doing intentional research, and I may have actually, those of you who were here last year, I may have used this example, but if you're doing intentional research, you're, you aren't necessarily going from your initial reactions, at least what you, you think is true. And my example is that I live in a subdivision where there are lots of, of rabbits, bunnies. In fact, when I walk in the morning, I, it's like a four bunny morning today. Um, I love seeing them. I love, I love animals. I love humans too, but I really, really love non-human animals. Um, and so in thinking about them as I'm, I'm going through there, I might think, well, isn't the subdivision so wonderful because we have these rabbits here and, you know, how do I maybe work with the subdivision to make sure that we have um, adequate plants for them? Or, you know, I'm thinking of actions because I like the rabbits. Um, and yet that may not be at all what they need. You know, so doing some research about, well, what is the uh, life cycle of rabbits? You know, or you know, how do they play? Since we're looking at the art and science of play, what, um, what are their lives like? You know, what, what happens when you live in the middle of a subdivision in the fourth largest city in, in the country? Um, and, and really thinking about, well, maybe, you know, what it is, maybe those rabbits need to be relocated or, you know, there, there may be something completely different. And so that's why you want to um, make sure that when you're, you're thinking about the action, that it may not be the thing that, that your society, your community needs. You know, another example from years ago is that we would do, um, uh, oh my gosh, now my, my mind is blanking on that. Um, the, the walk for cancer, the 24 hour walk for cancer, really for life. And, you know, where, where I live in Houston has this really strong organization that does it. It's not that they don't need our help, but it's not where we can do the most to help something. So, you know, looking at, well, where can we do the most good, where we can, ha can, we can have the greatest short-term impact. You can't know that without research. You can't know that without actually asking questions and looking at, at sources. So I, I'd say just, you know, trying to remember that and then, you know, appoint a weed whacker who stops you every time you're thinking, you know, I really, really, really want to do something for those bunnies. Um, because I like them. Um, 
and can say to you, you know, Susan, you say that at every meeting, let's table that for right now. I'll make a note of it, um, but let's stop that. And so I, I think in a practical sense, that may be the easiest way to get people to stop. You know, again, it doesn't mean you might not go back there, but yes. Yeah, so um, I think uh, Yadira said, so in a way it's void assumptions, yes. Um, you know, we all have assumptions. We all have things we love. We all have things we want to do that are, there are heart things, right? I mean, they're the things that, that we love, that we, um, you know, if we had a list of the things we love in the world, they, they would be on that, or, you know, we have a reason for wanting something. And so, you know, if you stop and say, is that um, the way to go? What, what do we know about this? What can we learn about this? Um, and, and then you, at the end, um, your assumptions may be right, but they may not be right. Um, and I should say, as you're going through that process, write it all down in your journals. You know, it, just the whole process of thinking, don't start with the action, be intentional. You can write all of that down because those are the kinds of details that you might write about in your honors and action hallmark award entry. All right. I, thank you. Thank you very much for um, the questions. And we thank you, Susan, for participating today. So um, I just had one more question, if that's okay. So my questions regarding the themes, and I'd love for you to go over in more detail about the seven themes in specific, because I'm looking at them right now, and I'm just trying to get a better understanding of what each theme is really entailing and about. Um, sure, and I don't know that I have, have enough time to do some of that, although I'm happy. Um, I think I'd put my email address on there. Here's the thing with... Um, if you look at the overarching questions, rather than just the theme titles. So mm -hmm. for example, theme one is essence of play and the overarching questions, what are the natural and philosophical foundations of play? That one, for instance, is all about, um, you know, why do we play? You know, why, why is it that almost all beings play in the world? What does that mean for us um, philosophically? What does it mean for us biologically? you know, why, what are the different roles? There's lots of, of research about, you know, the foundation of play for humans isn't necessarily for survival, certainly not in the 21st century, where for other beings, um, play is about learning to survive. And there's evidence that, that animals who play the most are the ones that survive best, um, which is it's kind of interesting to me when I read that because it seems like, well, maybe that, that would be maybe more risk-taking behavior. And so really, is that true? But, you know, researchers, especially um, when I wrote about in the essay is looking at bears, um, that, that that seems to make a huge difference for them. So, um, you know, economics of play, what are the financial, physical, and psychological costs and benefits of play? Um, I was just... Uh, talking with Jeff this morning that I, I'm a, a big sports fan, but I'm a big baseball fan. Baseball relaxes me. And while I, I do hate to say it in Nevada, California, go Astros, um, since I live in Houston, <laughs> with my apologies. But, um, you know, looking at, at going to baseball games, um, we, ha we have a triple A AAA minor league team here that a, a, is uh, an affiliate of the Astros and the Astros the tickets go up to $60 for these minor league games. I personally think that's ridiculous. And thank you, Melissa. Yes. Ah, oh, Kaisen, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, they go up to $60. That prices people out of being able to see games in person. Concerts, you know, in terms of play, without looking at sports, you know, there's a really good, um, uh, one of his, his essays, you know, John Oliver, and if you don't have uh, HBO, you can look online, and he talks about uh, Ticketmaster and Live Nation and how they control the prices and how they control things. Those are the kinds of things for theme two. So if you go through this, um, at some point, I'll, I'd love to go through all seven, but um, look at those overarching questions because that will tell you what that, it, that theme is about. You know, I know the titles don't always look at the, the broad spectrum, but also, and I'll put my um, email in the chat, you are always welcome to ask questions and, and 
talk about the honor study topic with me after this as well. So I'm, I'm thrilled when you have those questions. Perfect, thank you so much, Susan, really appreciate it. Sure. Okay, well, great. Um, so Faustina, thank you so much for uh, taking care of the questions and answers and the introduction. Um, I kind of wanted to chime in a little bit before uh, Faustina introduced our next uh, uh, person to introduce and take care of the questions and answers. But I know since this is our second year of, of boot camp, um, I am grateful for the interaction. I know this is something that we wanted to kind of try a little bit and I know we're a little bit over with the presentations, but we are so grateful for the questions that uh, we hear, not only read, but hear from you. And so uh, what we'll do is we, if any questions that have not been answered, um, just feel free to, uh, we'll just copy everything in the chat and then we'll make sure that we get those questions out to Susan or me or anyone. So just to give you a heads up. So Faustina, um, Mike is yours and you can introduce Abby, thanks. You're on mute. Um, okay, I was answering questions in chat and I was not paying attention. <laughs> so Christine, what did you want me to do? Oh, just go ahead and introduce Abby because she's one of our newest members. Oh, oh, oh. We're so excited about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay, uh, coming up next is um, Abby, who is our newest alumni member. And uh, I believe she's going to introduce Christine. Thank you so much. I am very happy to be here this morning. And yes, I have the honor of introducing our next speaker. Uh, Christine Lowe is a proud is proud to serve as your Nevada, California Regional Alumni Association president. She is an award-winning independent film producer, the first woman in her family to earn a master's degree and is a Hallmark award-winning chapter regional and as a few weeks ago, alumni officer. Uh, though Christine studied at Cambridge University in England, earned a bachelor's of art degree from UC Berkeley and a master's of science degree from San Jose State University. She's most proud of her film degrees from De Anza College and the leadership uh, experience gleaned from her service to Phi Theta Kappa and the Nevada, California region. Christine's feature length film, The Last Smile is per was produced while she was a student at De Anza College, and it can be seen on numerous platforms. Christine is currently working on a number of projects, including a feature length comedy film, a documentary, and an educational series on emergency management. So without further ado, here is Christine Lowe. Great, thank you, Abby. And uh, I'm, so, I'm so honored that Abby's giving his introduction. Uh, since we've had our in-person convention, uh, there has been such a significant increase of interest in joining the Alumni Association. And so Abby was right there to, to join. And it's a, it's a pleasure and a privilege to work with her and to get to uh, work with our new alumni. So thank you, Abby, for your introduction. And uh, I will go ahead and share the screen for uh, my presentation, uh, which is continuing from my last slide. And so we might go over a little bit in time, um, just because I really, really wanted our region to uh, ask Susan questions. And sometimes it just is a little bit of a disconnect when you type in. So you know, to type it in, if you're a little shy, no problem with that, but if you wanna, uh, ask questions, uh, feel free. And again, I'll try to keep it just a little bit after 12 noon so that we can go on to the Gung Ho workshop. But we really want you to get as much information as possible. So uh, my project, uh, my presentation is on overcoming project hurdles. And it was really great to have Susan cover a lot of those uh, issues that have come up uh, that is very common with our chapters, uh, not only here in our Nevada, California region, but also 
uh, just outside. Um, there's a lot of things that we all have in common. Uh, we're all smart individuals and accomplished and, and there are lots of hurdles like stretching ourselves too thin. And then by the time we get to December, it's like, oh gosh, I gotta take care of all these things. So I wanna share with you a little bit of the experiences that I gleaned in my chapter when I was a former student or when I was a student. <clears throat> Let me see if I can go on here. There we go. Okay, so yeah, I wanted to take a, a play on one of the themes, which is nostalgia's play, or uh, it, it falls into any of these categories, like theme three systems of play. Uh, with my personal Phi Theta Kappa journey, I started off like in my favorite um, TV show, which is MASH, which is actually my late grandfather's memory. His favorite television show was uh, MASH. And so anything in military, he loved it. And so for me, I felt like at the beginning, I was like Radar O'Reilly, who was really uh, young and a little bit green. And, and uh, by the end of his, uh, his journey, um, he ran that MASH unit. And then of course, my other favorite character was Colonel Potter, because he reminded me so much of my grandfather, where he uh, was probably a little shorter in stature than the rest of the cast. And, but um, he definitely had an amazing presence. And so in my uh, Phi Theta Kappa journey, I was very much like a, a younger <laughs> um, student, not really knowing how I was gonna fit in or where Phi Theta Kappa was going to fit into my life. But over the course of my journey as a chapter regional and now alumni officer, um, I'm so grateful to have been able to blossom in a way to, um, to help you in our Nevada, California region, our Pacific region and beyond, and really fulfill the visions that I hope to uh, see uh, in my uh, role as alumni president. So everyone has their own uh, personal journeys and I wanna share a little bit with you a little bit about mine. So I come from the Alpha Sigma Alpha chapter at De Anza Community College. This is located in Cupertino, California, north of San Jose, and it's uh, blocks away from this little known company called Apple. <laughs> so I'm from that area, right in the middle of Silicon Valley. Um, and uh, during my role as a, uh, as a member and officer of my chapter, I served as a vice president of operations. I was also a co-coordinator during that year of the uh, Peers Unite to Learn through Scholarly Exchange Peer Mentor Program Coordinator. This is a peer mentor program for the Pacific Islander students uh, who moved to Silicon Valley. And uh, we were lucky enough to actually win a Distinguished College Project Award in that year. So it was a real honor to kind of get a taste of what it's like to, um, to work on a successful project and actually make a difference to our college community. Uh, I also served as a college vice president, which will be really important um, in a future slide. And then I also served as chapter president uh, while I was a, a film student at De Anza College. And so one of the, I wanted to share with you the next uh, few slides are just the hurdles that, um, that I think many uh, have in common and that I experienced. Uh, just a lot of hurdles that you'll, uh, I'm sure you'll experience either just being uh, unsure of how you fit in to, gosh, you know, how do I wrap this whole project up? So one of the first hurdles I faced was just trying to fit in. Uh, I was a city planner, not very happy in it, uh, but I really wanted to make a change. And ever since my high school years, which was you know, 15, 20 years back then, um, I really wish I was a filmmaker, but I was too afraid and just didn't have the self-confidence to just pursue that desire. And so when I uh, returned to college, uh, changed careers and decided to take that leap and become a filmmaker, but I was older. And one of the things I always joked about is like, gosh, it seems like my clothes are older than the students who are you know, sitting next to me. So I didn't know whether I would fit in, but you know, the, the Alpha Sigma Alpha chapter was, was so welcoming. The students who were much younger than me, and of course my chapter advisor, who was our former regional coordinator, Charles Klein, just really welcomed me with open arms. And that progressed even more when I uh, entered my first regional convention and that was in uh, at Irvine. And so Sal Adada and Kurt Meyer were the first uh, advisors to really welcome me and put me at ease. And, and that Phi Theta Kappa not only um, embraces those who are you know, young, 
uh, they embrace those who are young at heart. So, and, and the average age at that time was about 31. So if you feel like you're a little older and you're not sure whether you fit in, you definitely do. One of the things that uh, helps in terms of fitting in um, that will apply for you now is taking advantage of using the activity guide for chapter leaders. And um, I let's see if I'll be able to click onto it really quickly, but for the sake of time, let me see if uh, see if this works still. Yeah, sometimes I need you need your credentials to get in. Um, but what I will do is see if I can go back to this presentation. Hang on. Okay. So um, what I found really great about the this activity guide for chapters leader is that even though I'm an alumni leader, I still actually refer to it because there's this booklet has oh, has really helped uh, in ways that I, I wish this book was in existence when I was an officer. And so everything from like helping students recognize and grow their uh, recognize their potential and and grow beyond that. Uh, I thought was really fascinating, as well as ways to uh, engage um, people from all walks of life and ages and backgrounds uh, to get together and take parts in team events. So everything like a treasure hunt or team building exercise, those I found really, really helpful. And also what I found useful for the uh, chapter leaders activity guide was if you were interested in becoming a chapter officer or a regional officer or even beyond, there's a little bit of information about that too. So for you ambitious types who are thinking of sticking around for another year or so, um, there's a little bit of something for everyone in this particular activity guide. So definitely take advantage of it. And again, you can find this org and you're actually going to take uh, the opportunity to find this during your uh, gung-ho exercise. So one of the things that uh, that I'm proud of is that with our Nevada California region we do everything that we can to help um, members and officers and advisors especially advisors because they are the backbone of our honor society we wouldn't be successful without the advisors and so if you know your advisor definitely give him or her a shout out because they are definitely so helpful to um, not only to you but for us in our region and our alumni association so a number of ways that we try to reach out to members and advisors are through a number of events that the regions host. And so uh, we have our uh, Alumni Association T3 event. This is a fairly new and pretty successful and they're uh, informal workshops, educational forums, but um, it's an informal setting. So like today we have a HIA boot camp. So it has that level of informality. And uh, what I really like about T3 uh, which is an homage to my late grandmother, is that uh, it gives us an opportunity to reach out to those not only within but outside our Nevada, California region. And so always in that spirit, we try to host an event uh, in which um, you know, it could range to a variety of topics from how to win a Hallmark award-winning entry to, uh, hey, I need a fresh start after the pandemic. We also have our conferences, and so our next conference will be our Fall Leadership Conference that will be held in Los Angeles, just south of LA Airport, and this will be held on the 21st and 22nd of October, and this is uh, during the <laughs> baseball playoff season, so I hope <clears throat> my Dodgers will be there, but I will <laughs> but I will definitely be there for the Fall Leadership Conference by Data Capital Spurs. Um, we also have uh, an amazing regional officer team uh, each year. We have an extraordinary group of uh, student leaders who want to just take their leadership up to the next level. And so we have a, a team of wonderful regional officers that come from uh, different districts within our Nevada, California region. And so they have uh, various events that they hold throughout the year that will keep you engaged and involved. So in case for those who um, may not be able to have an honors and action project in place this year, definitely take advantage of the other events that our regional officer, as well as our alumni association host, because we are, we work hard for you. We really are passionate about Fight Data Kappa and uh, we want you to be as successful as possible in your Fight Data Kappa journey. And the one thing that I want to note is that, yes, uh, you know, we always strive for our Nevada, California chapters to be a five-star chapter. 
but you know, if you're just a new chapter uh, wanting to engage, any star level is is a, is a success, no matter what. All right, so I know Susan had talked about this, and this was one of the biggest hurdles for me, uh, even though I was an older student and had some nice life experience. Oh my gosh, the weight of research. That was the one thing as a student really scared the dickens out of me, but as Susan mentioned, um, this is something that is really tangible and it just takes time, some teamwork, and it doesn't have to be a lot of people, sometimes just one person or two uh, with your army of angels, using that boot camp term, but army of supporters to help you. So it could be a, an advisor, a chapter teammate, it could be someone from your community or your college. Um, even though this may seem like a heavy project with, with honors in action, um, the the honors topic guide and everything in it and the website will really help you um, make this huge tire actually seem like little tires that are actually tangible. So one of the ways that has been most helpful is utilizing PTK Edge. Um, this is Phi Theta Kappa's professional curriculum. And back in my day, we had a competitive edge, which still exists. Um, we had a different pin that actually had five stars because we we're five star members. That concept still applies, but what makes it really beneficial for you in this day and age is that there are a, a variety of levels that cater to your particular interest. I would strongly recommend that you take advantage of competitive edge. Um, this is, and the one great thing, and I know my ed, ed, alumni advisor, Saladana is here, that if you do complete your competitive edge, he will actually give you a pen uh, at the next uh, convention. So definitely take advantage of that. And uh, I'll give you my contact information at the end if you have any questions about that. And I'll definitely refer you to Saladada. But he has been so instrumental to um, encouraging and empowering students to, to take advantage of the PTK Edge programs, particularly Competitive Edge. I have personally taken advantage, taken advantage of Employment Edge because yes, I enjoy become, I'm enjoying my job as a filmmaker, but like 99% of us, um, we don't really make that much money. And I volunteer a lot of my time with Phi Theta Kappa. So I'm always looking for um, something that helps uh, you know, bring home a little bit more bacon than the lean bacon that I take home as it is. So Employment Edge has been really helpful for me. Uh, just redevelop my skills and my strengths and um, that's been really helpful for me. And ironically, I've been taking advantage, I've been reviewing more of the research edges, taking advantage of that because my next documentary does require some research. Being a documentarian, you just don't go out and do film. It's the same concept as honors in action. You can't put out the cart before the horse. So in my work as a documentarian, I have to lay the foundation you know, who, you know, get to know my subject a little bit more, what it's going to take to raise funds. It's the same concept. And so everything that you learn in these EDGE programs is going to help you not only after your time here at your two-year community college level, but it's going to take you all the way through your transfer to your work skills. And it, I use it, it applies a lot to what I do as a filmmaker. So definitely take advantage of that. And you see at the screen how you're able to access this through our um, website and you know, just alternate ways. But again, if there's any questions, you're welcome to contact me afterward. So again, because this is a regarding Honors in Action Bootcamp, we really wanted to focus on Research Edge. And as you can see, this is a self-paced program. And I love this because as a Phi Theta captain, uh, we stretch ourselves pretty thin. So everything from work, life balance, all that, um, there's times where I just can't meet my deadline. And so to actually have a research program or this edge program, like everything else, all the edge programs that are self-paced, you know, you take that time either late at night or for me, since I'm a morning person, that's when I'm at my strongest and I'm able to accomplish a lot with the self-paced program. So definitely take advantage of it. And this will definitely help you when you uh, work on your honors in action project. And the cool thing is that you get badges and then, you know, they feel like those thinking badges. No, these are cool badges. And so for a uh, research edge, you get your badges through investigation action and impact, which, oh, by the way, this is very much similar from what you would see in your rubric. And so I'll talk about that shortly. 
teamwork. That was another hurdle that um, that sometimes it, it's easier for uh, some teams and, and maybe not as uh, easy for others. I've kind of experienced the whole gamut in my years as a chapter officer. You know, again, there's a wide range of personalities and uh, backgrounds and also just time to devote to Phi Theta Kappa. And so some are you know, really gung-ho about it. And then there are those where it's like, I should have this obligation or you know, I might be getting a C you know, in my class and so I got to devote more time. And so the best, the, um, the activity guide for chapter leaders, again, is a really helpful resource in terms of ways to work uh, around teamwork issues. And the great thing about what you glean in your experience with honors in action or your chapter activities is that you get to learn a lot of this uh, well ahead of your peers who may not be honor students or may not be a part of Phi Theta Kappa. But teamwork is so important because it could be with a lot of people. So for me in the Alumni Association, I'm a teammate with 11 other accomplished um, leaders. Um, and then sometimes there, you know, uh, I was in a team of three where um, we had to do a lot, but boy, we got to uh, get so much out of that experience. So with teamwork, it's so important. Um, and not only if the activities guide for chapter leaders uh, doesn't provide all the tips that you need, there's a lot of teamwork tips that you can get online as well. Uh, yes, uh, that wonderful school life balance. And that's, that I think was the toughest hurdle as a Phi Theta Kappan. Um, I, you know, even though, I mean, there are, I'm sure several of you who are parents, um, I didn't have children, but I had, you know, just the struggles of my career trying to, um, you know, try to make money, try to find projects, you know, that takes a lot of work. Also just being, uh, trying to figure out what my true potential was as a Phi Theta Kappa leader. And also just taking the time to, um, to blend my time in with my family, with my friends, uh, with my family of friends. And so there's a lot of juggling that you do in, in school and life balance. Um, one of the cool things is that uh, our fall leadership conference. Sometimes they have educational forums on how to, to deal with that, either through time management or just trying to find a balance to where, uh, you know, mental health issues, again, is like another educational forum that I think that came up recently to where is it will help you enhance that balance. Um, because you are so accomplished and talented, there's a lot that is asked of you. Uh, the best part of it is, is being, you know, taking the, um, courage to say no. And so that that also helps with trying to uh, provide a good foundation for you. Um, and I know my advisor, Bill, says, OK, I wish you would do that, Christine. So I promise I will this summer. <laughs> uh, and the biggest part, this is the this is the one thing that will help you stay ahead uh, in the crowd and also beating the clock, because with journaling, you're going to forget things that you um, that came up back in you know, January or February or May, um, because when it comes down to the end of the year, you start running into the big four. Um, that is the holidays, uh, this November 30th, which is the deadline for college uh, admissions uh, or college applications. Um, then you also run into uh, Hallmark Awards season and of course Christmas and New Year's and then Hallmark Awards deadlines in January. So by journaling, boy, uh, this has helped me tremendously and um, it helped a lot as, as a chapter officer and that was a practice that I continued and it really, really helped me this year um, when we were uh, getting a team together to write the Hallmark Award entry for the Alumni Association. And so as we put it, everything together uh, comes down the Hallmark Awards right up. And um, I really love this slide. It's with all the puzzle pieces. It's a camouflage, isn't that cool? <laughs> all right. But yeah, you're trying to, as you get close to the end of the year, you got to wrap everything up uh, probably as early as October to, uh, to January. So the biggest advice that I could give you is to follow the rubric. If they ask how, explain how. Uh, when they have the uh, how to get the most points possible, 
look at those keywords and honestly do what you can to apply it. And so um, as you'll see here, if you print out the packet, it's about 10, uh, about 10 pages. But um, the really great thing about going through the rubrics is that it does make it really clear for you. Um, and so you know, definitely take the time and the effort to follow the rubrics. And then as you go through the Hallmark Award entries, you definitely wanna take the time to have uh, other people read it, whether it's team members or one great tip that I, um, I'm borrowing from Patty Van Adder from last year, is that just have someone outside um, your Phi Theta Kappa circle to see if, it, uh, if it's understandable to read. Because for the judges who read dozens or hundreds of Hallmark Award entries, you, wanna, you want your entry to be uh, grammatically perfect, spelled correctly, and tell an engaging story. And as Susan mentioned, it's like it, 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 you know, it may not be the best project, but it, it should be something that, um, that you're, able, you know, you're able to overcome obstacles. It doesn't have to be the perfect project. The rich part of it is, is just the obstacles that um, your chapter went through and overcame. And so the additional tips uh, that's, uh, that I wanted to share with you is that, is that we hosted uh, a T3 event back in November, 2020. And this was uh, about how to win Hallmark Awards for those special individuals. And so we have that in our alumni website. And um, that, is, that still remains on our website. And that is a wonderful resource for you to follow. And uh, there's some great tips. And again, we're always available to help you if there's any additional questions that you may have. Um, let's see, how am I on time? Right on time. So the icing on the cake. Uh, yes, this is a great photo of our chapter winning all these Hallmark Awards and certificates. Um, this was a wonderful uh, event. Um, we had no idea that we would be this successful um, where our Alpha Sigma Alpha chapter won for Hallmark Awards, for Honors in Action, for College Project, uh, for hosting a regional convention. Um, but I'm gonna share something with you. Though I really enjoyed this experience and it was my, and I was also elected as your Nevada, California regional uh, president. And I also won a Hallmark Award for Distinguished Chapter Officer. The most, oops, I'm sorry, hang on a moment here. That's just to warn me. Oh, I have 10 minutes left. The most wonderful experience was when we did not win a Hallmark Award. And so for some who might know me, like Miriam, if I ever call it the Pomona experience, that's what I'm referring to. We submitted entries for honors in action, the college project. I submitted a Hallmark um, a competition for a regional film award and nothing. Um, it was crushing. I'll, I'll be honest with you on that because there's like a little competitive aspect that I have. And, and so you know, be honest with that. But I'll tell you, that was the best experience um, I had. And it wasn't because of the quote unquote agony of defeat. I was a college project uh, vice president or co-VP at that time. And we worked on a college project uh, that was called Project Free, P-H-R-E-E. -E, and that was for... Um, a human rights uh, campaign. And we produced a video and our college president loved it. And he was promoting this in, in all the conferences that he attended because it was such an important project. Um, so that was one great experience. And even though we didn't place in the, in the regional competitions, much less in international, um, to be a part of, of a team of four dedicated students uh, was the most extraordinary experience that I ever enjoyed. And we didn't even win an award. Um, I got to learn my project management skills from someone who was 20 years younger than me. Um, her project management skills were, were unmatched and I do my best to, um, to do what she does. Uh, she went on to become a scholarship student at Santa Cruz and now works uh, in San Jose for one of the community college uh, in San Jose, Evergreen, I believe. And so um, also really uh, getting to know our college president and trusting us and also bonding with our advisor. 
um, those were experiences that I would have never enjoyed had I not been a part of Phi Theta Kappa, uh, working on a college project or honors in action project. And so even though this is a cool picture and this is something that will make the newspaper, what really is the headline is the experience I gleaned, whether or not I won a Hallmark Award or came away with nothing. All right, so you've gone through boot camp, you've completed your honors in action or your college project. What next? <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, our role in the Alumni Association. I know this is something that um, is new for this year's boot camp, uh, but one of the things that I really want to encourage are for those uh, to join the Alumni Association, especially for those who are going to enter the workforce or transfer to a four year university after your experience here at Phi Theta Kappa this uh, spring, one of the things that I hear time and time again is like, okay, I just became a member of Phi Theta Kappa, I'm transferring, but gosh, now that I know Phi Theta Kappa, I wish I can get more involved. Well, I have, a, <laughs> I have the perfect venue for you. This is by joining the Alumni Association. And so on your bottom right corner of the screen, we have the QR code to, um, for your application on becoming a member. There are so many opportunities to, in giving back. Uh, one is supporting our Nevada, California region and beyond, as well as the chapters. And again, by being a part of this event, you get to, you get to check off your three-star level. So that's one of the ways that we're able to give back is just to help you or your chapter um, become a five-star chapter or become a five-star individual. Uh, we also love supporting regions as well as the Center of Excellence. Um, just because they work so hard uh, to give us a plethora of information and resources and update every year or two years. So again, this honors uh, study guide um, is you know, a, a project that took years in the making and we get to enjoy this for the next two years. And that takes a lot of effort from uh, Phi Theta Kappa headquarters. And um, so we're always, uh, we're always happy to support them one way or another. And we're so grateful for Susan to join us again. So we're really um, grateful that we have that kind of collaboration to, to work together on all three levels of um, honors and um, Phi Theta Kappa leadership from a chapter, regional, and as well as a headquarters level. We also wanna support you. Uh, one of the things that we'll be working on, especially uh, this year, is try to support the Phi Theta Kappans who are leading us uh, at the community college level. And so one of the things that I experienced as a, um, as a chapter officer, and at that time I already had a bachelor's degree, so I was working on my master's degree at San Jose State. And even though it was all well and good, sometimes it feels a little lonely. And so what we're working on this year is really trying to have either a support group or some ways to where we can all get together um, you know, through either an informal T3 event or some kind of event to where it's like, hey, you know, talk to us, you know, what's going on. You know, sometimes just listening is, is a, a key to success. And of course, having fun. Um, we really enjoy having these informal events like boot camp uh, because we get to engage with our regional coordinator, Miriam Moody, Susan Edwards, Phi Theta Kappa headquarters, and Erin Millard from our Pacific region and all the chapters from that region. Um, this is such a great opportunity to do something fun and informative and educational. And that's where, um, I think that's one of the ways that our alumni association shines. So thanks to Phi Theta Kappa, uh, my experience working on honors in action and college projects, even though I was not an honors in action officer, I got involved with the uh, honors in action project for every year that I was at the ends of college. And thanks to the experiences that I gleaned, I was able to graduate with an associate's degree in film and television production. Um, I also got to complete my master's degree in transportation management, in which you actually see me pictured here with the late Marmon Mineta. He um, and his cause has been so instrumental in my life and in my you know, side hustle or side career as a filmmaker, in which my interest is in emergency and disaster management, which is a transportation issue. And so thanks to Mr. Mineta and the, the master's degree program through the Mineta Institute at San Jose State, I got to do what I, my family has never been able to do. 
and that's to get a master's degree. And so I am the third person next to my late father and my husband, but the first woman to get the master's degree. And it's really, really cool, and I'm proud of that. Um, thanks to Phi Theta Kappa, I've been able to glean the experiences that I learned as a chapter leader, as a struggling officer, as a struggling uh, filmmaker, to uh, keep keep fighting, keep uh, working on, on completing my film. And so thanks to uh, our wonderful dedicated crew, we we're able to um, enter the last mile to a number of film festivals. And so um, we got we got into CineQuest, which is a big film festival in my neck of the woods in Silicon Valley and San Jose. And um, it, it was a wonderful opportunity to use my skills in networking and breaking out of my shyness shell and um, start interacting with people. And normally I'm shy, because, but because of the job that I hold, which is president, um, I'm forced to you know, go out there and, and reach out. And you know what? It's not that hard and it's not that scary. So thanks to my experience at Phi Theta Kappa, I got to really interact with some really accomplished filmmakers and also have the guts to reach out to my documentary subject who was featured at a pregame show uh, on Thanksgiving Day last year. He has an incredible story. Uh, he's a formerly homeless person who um, was homeless in Fresno. But over the course of five or six years and a help from a professional or former professional football player, uh, he is a scholarship student at UC Santa Cruz. And I get to document all this and his three to four year journey. So if I didn't have that gut, the guts that I learned through Phi Theta Kappa, I wouldn't have reached out to this guy who was a complete stranger and agreed to be my documentary subject. So I'm, I'm happy about that. And of course, the the wonderful achievement in my Phi Theta Kappa journey is to really be a, a, a teammate of these amazing, uh, extraordinary individuals like Faustina, Sheila Burson, the Demopolises, Bill and Barbara, Sala Dada, um, and, so, and Sheila Burson, I already mentioned her, and all of our new alumni. Without these great teammates and the great projects that we worked on, um, you know, we wouldn't have won this award, but we also wouldn't have won this award without you. For you to uh, register for this event, another three digit <laughs> attendance um, really makes us so happy because we really work hard for you and we're so um, desirous of wanting for you to succeed. So uh, because of Phi Theta Kappa, I've been able to remain um, in Phi Theta Kappa as an alumni officer. So I want to thank you so much uh, for taking listen to my presentation. I hope that your journey in Phi Theta Kappa, regardless if you're going to transfer in a few months or stick around for a few more years, I hope it's as rewarding as it has been for me. My contact information is below. Um, please contact me, and uh, I really I hope that we get to stay in touch in the weeks and months afterward. Thank you so much. Great. Um, I, I could field if you have any, if you have a question, I can uh, field one or two questions. How do I find out what chapter I'm a part of? Okay. Um, uh, are you, what, what college are you from? Sacramento City College. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, I, rem I used to, I'll find that out for you, but I know I've got the roster that oh, has right. all the colleges and the chapters, but you definitely do belong to um, Beta Eta Psi, I think is the, the chapter name. I'm, oh, that's a bad joke, but it's all Greek to me, but. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. <laughs> I kind of put you on the spot, so it's okay. <laughs> that's all right. Okay. I think there are all the chapters are listed on the regional web page. All those. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I used to. I, I'm I'm getting better at it, but there are you know, you know, I'll get really good with knowing the chapters, but um, but I'll I'll look for it during whenever I've got a break, and I'll let you know by the end of the presentation or the end of the boot camp. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks for asking. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks. All right. 
Um, Abby, unless there's any additional questions, I think we should probably just move on. I've actually, we're making really beta eight aside. Thank you. Yeah. I don't right. see any uh, any questions in the chat. I just see it blowing up and saying thank you so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much, Christine, for that. Um, I believe that there is going to be a short break. Yeah. So let me get my <clears throat> excuse me. Got a frog in my throat here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and. Um, go into our breakout rooms. Uh, there should be, have been somewhere in the chat in the survival guide. Um, it might be a little bit earlier. Actually, I'll take, take a look at the chat here. If you scroll up, it's probably close to the very beginning, which is easy to do. You should see a, um, a checklist, which is called HIA Bootcamp Survival Guide. And, oh, just reposted it, thank you. Um, let me see. So you're General Moody. Okay. <laughs> General Ma Mary Moody. So thank you, Miriam. So what um, Miriam has done is uh, she has already set up breakout rooms for you. And um, actually, and before we get into our breakout rooms, if you are an advisor, um, you know, if I could just ask you whenever you're in a breakout room, just feel free to uh, introduce yourself and take time to, and, and hopefully everyone will have the opportunity to introduce uh, themselves to everyone. Um, advisors, you don't have to moderate the whole thing. If you'd like to pass this on to a chapter, uh, a brand new member or a chapter officer, you know, and please, you know, for those who are brand new, please don't be shy. This is the coolest thing about being part of Phi Theta Kappa is that you've got your instant family of friends. So we're all here, you know, cheering for you. So, um, but go through that survival checklist, do a bit of a scavenger hunt. And then there's also questions based on the essay uh, that Susan wrote. And so, um, you know, there's questions that will help you if you read it. Um, and in case you didn't, there's questions that will help you throughout the way. So um, take a little break, get in your breakout rooms. And uh, I really hope that within the next 50 to 45 to 50 minutes that you'll be able to become more familiar with your new group of friends and also become more uh, familiarized with the honors and action process and the resources that are provided through Phi Theta Kappa. Great, so we'll go ahead and go into our breakout rooms and um, Miriam, do you have any words? Uh, oh, okay, great. So you should have on your screen um, your name and the group that you're joining. So, all right, have fun everyone. Thank you, Miriam, for doing all this. 